Hey, and welcome to our video solution for problem 14 for my spring 2020 final exam. Here we're trying to solve a differential equation, y double prime plus y equals zero. And we have lots of different ways of solving that from this class. Um, but we want to use our power series method to solve it. So definitely, definitely not the easiest way to solve such a differential equation. Uh, but this is more just to show that we can use the method uh, on something which isn't uh, too complicated. So uh, when we're trying to find a power series solution, well, we assume that our y has a power series. So that's how we start. We're going to assume that y has some power series. Say it'll go from 0 to infinity, a sub n, x to the n. Now, if this is the case, then we can write 0 equals y double prime plus y. And now we can take the second derivative, all right? And we have a, uh, a theorem which tells us if we have a power series, well, when it converges, we can take uh, the derivative term by term. And since we're going to take two derivatives, we'll take two derivatives term by term. So we'll get sum from 0 to infinity. Two derivatives, I'm going to pull down first an n, and then an n minus 1, a sub n, x to the n minus 2. All right. Now, I can observe that at n equals 0, there's nothing to talk about here, right? This is just going to be a 0. When n equals 1, there's nothing to talk about here, right? I get 1 minus 1 is 0, so there'll be nothing. So I really could start this at 2. Uh, I probably will change that in a little bit, but let's just keep that in the back of our mind. All right, so this was our y double prime. And then we can just copy our y for, for the second piece. So that'll go from 0 to infinity, and then I'll have a n x to the n. And that's my y. OK, now I would like to combine these into one summation. And to do that, I want to line up the powers of x. So I notice here I have n minus 2 versus n. And, and that's not going to work for me. Um, so I'm going to have to raise this n minus 2 into an n. Now, if I do that, I'm going to have to lower this. Uh, so let me play this game here and replace the 0, right? So I want to replace the 0 by a 2, okay? So I'm going to write a 2 here because I know, again, when n equals 0 or n equals 1, the summons are just 0 anyway. And the reason I want to do that is so that now when I, when I have to drop this back down by 2, it'll just go to 0 and not to something silly like negative 2. All right, so I can rewrite this now as a sum from, and let's leave that blank for a moment. Um, I'm going to increase all my n's by 2, right? I want to replace n by n plus 2. So this becomes n plus 2, and then n plus 2 minus 1 is n plus 1, a sub n plus 2, and then x to the n plus 2 minus 2 is x to the n. Okay, and um, you know the rule of thumb is if you increase your n by something, you're going to have to decrease the index by that same amount, uh, or you can just check. Um, I know the very first non-zero summand is going to be at n equals 2 here, which gives me x to the 2 minus 2, which is x to the 0. So I need to start with an x to the 0 here, which means I need my n to start at 0. Okay, and of course the other piece doesn't, doesn't change. And now I check, and I have the same exponents on the x, and I also have the same indices. So I can really combine these without any, any trouble. So I put this together, and I'll have a sum from 0 to infinity. Uh, they both have x to the n's, so that'll come out. I have n plus 2 times n plus 1 times a n plus 2, as well as an a sub n. And all that gets multiplied by x to the n. Okay, so I have simplified this to one power series on the right. On the left, I also have a power series. It's not a very interesting one, but it's an important one. It could be written in the following way, n goes from 0 to infinity, 0x to the n. And the reason why it's useful to think of 0 as the 0 power series, as we've written here, is because we have a result a result which tells us that if you have 
two power series that are equal to each other, then the corresponding coefficients have to be equal. And so from this we can conclude, since these power series are equal, that zero is equal to all of the coefficients. So we conclude that n plus 2, n plus 1, an plus 2, plus an is equal to 0 for all n at least 0. All right. We would like to actually know what these coefficients are, though, right? Because remember the, how we started. We assumed that y was some power series. And we're trying to figure out what y is. Well, the only thing we're missing are these coefficients. So we want to use this recurrence relation to find what these coefficients are. So what I'm going to do is solve for the larger indexed a here. So a n plus 2 is going to equal, let's see, I subtract and I'll get negative 1 over, I'm going to divide by this here, n plus 2, n plus 1. And you might say, well, what happened to the negative a n, right? Okay, well, I'll put that over here. Okay, now when we're doing these, we, we check these indices and we see they are two apart, which means I'm essentially going to have two cases to, to worry about. All right, so we start with a sub zero. We have no idea what that is. Fine. Then we go to a sub one. We have no idea what that is, right? Why can't we use this formula to compute them? Well, we can only compute something down here when it's at least, well, what, n plus 2 and n is at least 0? Yeah, it has to start at 2. So a0 and a1, we're never going to be able to figure those out. But that's not a huge surprise. We're starting with a second order differential equation. We know the general solution should have two constants, and a0 and a1 are going to be our constants. All right, so let's go to the next one, a sub 2. Now we can actually use this recurrence relation. a sub 2 will be negative 1 over, now we check, n plus 2 and n plus 2, those match. So I just copy this number 2. And then this is 1 less than n plus 2, so 2 times 1. a sub, well, this is 2 less than n plus 2, so a sub 0. All right, so we know that a2 is going to be negative 1 over 2 times 1 times a sub 0. I don't want to simplify that. All right, and you'll see in a, in a little bit why I, I don't really want to simplify. So next, a sub 4. Right? I'm skipping a sub 3 because that's sort of in another column, right? These are going to break up as sort of the even and the odds. So a sub 4 will be negative 1 over, again, I just copy, 4, then go 1 less, times 3, and then 2 less, a sub 2. But I already computed a sub 2 on the previous line. So I can replace a sub 2 with this expression. This negative and that negative will cancel. And I'm going to get 1 over, well, I have a 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Ooh, that looks like something we know. And then, of course, we have the a0. All right, let's do one more, and then I think we're probably going to know what the pattern is. So a sub 6 is going to be negative. 1 over, okay, we copy the 6, we go down by 1 to a 5, and then we go down by 2 to a sub 4. But I just computed a sub 4 up above. This is negative 1 over, okay, and let's not be coy about it now, right? We have 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, that's 6 factorial. And then I have an a naught. And so the pattern we should be seeing is that we're alternating the sign, right? negative, positive, negative. We're getting our, our index factorial, and then there's an a naught. Okay, so what we, we should conclude from here is that a sub 2n is equal to, well, you should have an alternator. And let's see, if I think of this 4 as 2 times 2 and the 6 as 2 times 3, my n here would be 2, my n here would be 3. In the odd cases, I get a negative. In the even cases, I get a positive. So I want to use a regular negative 1 to the n. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to have 1 over, well, whatever this number is, that's 2 sub 2n factorial, and then a naught. 
All right. That's what we believe it is. Uh, what if we wanted to prove it? Okay, well, we, we use induction, right? We already have m multiple base cases. Um, we could prove it using induction. So prove using induction. So if we assume this works for A to N, that is when N, uh, for, for this particular N, the next term would be A to N quantity plus one, right? So two times n plus one, which is a two n plus two. Now, our recurrence relation says that it's going to equal negative one over, okay, all this stuff. Let, let's copy this uh, down so we, we don't have to try to remember it. Let's see, we have a n plus two is negative one over n plus two, n plus one a sub n. So using our recurrence relation, uh, a 2n plus 2 should be negative 1 over, we copy, so 2n plus 2, then copy 1 less, so 2n plus 1, a sub, well, what was 2 less? The 2 less was a sub 2n. All right, now by induction, a sub 2n is equal to this expression above. All right, so we'll have negative, then we'll have an alternator, then we'll have 1 over 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1, times 1 over 2n factorial, a sub naught. All right, but I can combine these this alternator with a negative into a negative 1 to the n plus 1. And then these two fractions combine to give me 1 over 2n plus 2 factorial. And then I still have the a naught. And that's what we need to show. The n is now, in this case, n plus 1. So that's the exponent on our alternator. The index is 2n plus 2. And sure enough, we have 2n plus 2 factorial. And then we have our a naught. All right, so that gives us our, our proof for the even case. Let's look at what happens in the odd case. So if I want to compute a sub 3, this is going to be negative 1 over 3 times 2 a sub 1. How about a sub 5? This will be negative 1 over 5 times 4 a sub 3. But I already know a sub 3. I can replace it by what's up above. The negatives will cancel. And I'll get 1 over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 a sub 1. Ah, uh, look what we're getting again. The, the times 1 isn't there, which makes it look a little bit different, but it's not. Of course, times 1 doesn't mean anything. This is 3 factorial. This is 5 factorial. Yeah, I say we make a guess. I say we make a guess it's going to do the same thing in that if we do now, well, of course, we have odds, so we'll call it a2n plus 1. We're going to get an alternator because you can see the alternating signs. Now, let's see. This was 2 times 1 plus 1. This is 2 times 2 plus 1. So again, when n is even, we get positive, and when n is odd, we get negative. So we'll keep that negative 1 to the n. Then we'll have 1 over, we have just the index factorial, so 2n plus 1 factorial, and then we have a sub 1. Okay, And a proof would work exactly the same way, so we could also prove this similarly by induction. All right, I won't go through that. I'll let you do those steps, but it, the, the, the argument will be exactly the same. All right, so it looks like in both the even and the odd situation, we get almost the exact same uh, form of the coefficients. The only real difference here uh, is at the end, we have an a naught versus an a1 constant. Okay, so we can now put this all together to give a solution to our differential equation. So you remember our y was equal to this infinite series a n x to the n, but now we know what our a n's are. And they break up into two cases, either even or odd. So let's handle the, uh, let's say the uh, evens first, because that'll start at zero. When um, 
n is even, right? Okay, so that's that's what our case is. Uh, we can go from zero to infinity, but now our coefficients, right? We know what they're going to be. Uh, let's see, we had a nice result. Yes, it was negative one to the n, one over two n factorial, a naught, which let's actually pull the a naught outside, x to the two n. And then in the odd situation, so this is our even even situation. In an odd situation, we go from zero to infinity, we again get negative one to the n, but now we have one over two n plus one factorial. And then there was an a one, which again we'll pull out. And then we have x to the two n plus one. So this is our odd situation. Now, we could just be done right here, uh, but man, it it's, feels like a missed opportunity if we don't recognize these series here. All right? Each of these series is something we actually know. This over here is the series for cosine, right? The Maclaurin series for cosine of x. And on the right, we have sine of x. So this is actually equal to a naught cosine of x plus a1 sine of x, which is a pretty cool revelation. Although if we had used any of the other techniques, right, in our toolbox for solving the original differential equation, we would have found this probably much, much faster. All right, well, that's how we can use power series to solve this differential equation.